Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome back to Cannon Fodder, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world. Uh, to be honest, I don't even know where to start with this one. Post-game reaction. I was going to do one last night, and I didn't even watch the penalties. I didn't even watch the penalties. I was going to do a post-game reaction last night, but it just went on for so long, and I thought, I oh, know, no. But I didn't even watch the penalties. But now you know what happened. What happened? If you don't know, you're going to find out. We're going to see another side of this kind of post-game reaction on the other side of this music intro. Yeah, I'm just shaking my head. I don't know how I'm going to start this one off. <laughs> I didn't prepare anything at all. Well, I did some images, but like, but anyhow, anyhow, let's start from the very, very beginning. Welcome back to Canon Fodder, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world. There's a nice start there for you. Yeah. Welcome to the evening show. It's going to be a short show. A kind of post game reaction that I was going to do last night, but because it's so late, I didn't even watch the penalties because I had an early start because today is St. Patrick's Day. But anyhow, if you just click the like button, please help us grow over here on this wonderful community over here on Canon 40 TV. Also, come into the live chat. You can probably see here Emerson Kelsey. He is the first one in this short show over here. And you might want to do something else. I don't know, maybe some get something off your chest. But welcome back to the show over here. So there's your start for you. Where do we go from here? Uh, I've got no idea, man. Anyway, I think we'll probably start... Oh, my goodness, where are we going to start? Anyway, we'll start with the results. There's the result. 1-1. One, one. Yeah, it was a really good start by Arsenal. But saying that, <clears throat> 20 minutes in, I was thinking, for all Sporting Lisbon's control of the game, I thought this is not going to amount to anything unless they can score a goal. And lo and behold, we see Granit Xhaka pops up after, I think, I can't remember who played him through the lines, actually. Uh, it wasn't, it, no, no one played from the lines. It was from Martinelli's shot. Bearing down, the right back missed the ball. <coughs> but Martinelli bared down on the goal. Uh, goalkeeper made a relatively good uh, save. And then only for the rebound to go to uh, the feet of Granit Xhaka, as you guys call the X-Man. And the X-Man put it away nicely. And then you kind of thought, Okay, yeah, we're, we're on our way. We're on our way, but that it didn't go that way, did it? It didn't go that way. You know, for the vast majority of the first half, much like the first leg, you look at Arsenal at home, Europa League. They look like the away team at the Emirates. They look like the away team, and the first one that came to my mind was. The last game I was at the Emirates was a Europa League game. Arsenal versus Olympiacos. And that's the feeling I got in my gut. What I was seeing there late last night was almost a repeat of Olympiacos game there. We, we paid for it. We paid for it. We were too complacent. And I go back to this gentleman here. Again, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I will be uh, naming and shaming. But the, I don't want to use the word blame. I'll use the word blame. Yeah, let's use the word blame. Now, Mikko Arteta, <sighs> he did say in his, in his uh, press conference, post-game press conference, that um, he wanted to win it. Well, if you wanted to win it, the first leg, you should have played your strongest 11. Should have played your strongest 11 from the first leg. You, know, you cannot get away with <coughs> a little bit of rotation, you're playing a player who only had one game for us, Kivor, Jacob Kivor, and you know what happened there. There was some doubt whether, you know, I, I don't know whether uh, Matt Turner um, sh gave him the shout, and not, none of them got the ball. And so they, they scored, Sporting Lisbon scored. It is the fine lines once again that catches us out. I can't even say that is a Fabio Vieira, the first leg. I thought he had a good game. The first leg. But the second game, he was... I don't know what happened. He lasted a long time. 
a real long time. But I do have to say this lands at the feet of Mikel Arteta. The changes that he made from the first leg and in the second leg, play your strongest 11. Play your strongest. You know, Sport and Lisbon, they are no mugs. They're no mugs. Do you know who knocked them out? I just, I just kind of found out this morning because they are going to work. And the majority of my, my colleagues are either Liverpool fans, supporters, or Man United fans, supporters. And as your Tottenham fan, a supporter. And he said to him, but, but you know, do you know who, who knocked Sporting Lisbon out of the Champions League? I think, oh, no. He said, we did. Tottenham. Tottenham knocked them out. And Sporting Lisbon knocked us out of the Europa League. So the point I'm trying to make is, is that you cannot, if you, if you, depending on how you, you view a particular competition, if you're thinking, well, you know, we're going to give it maybe the best, it's going to be a strong-ish 11, then what do you expect back? You cannot do that against a Sporting Lisbon team. And I tell you what, I'll give a big shout out to one one Arsenal and Apollo. I was in their live chat half time. And I said to them, without trying to upset anybody, I said, Sporting Lisbon, they will not panic. They will not panic. They will take things nice and calm. They know the, the feel I got is like, right. They're thinking they've got Arsenal right where they want them. Right where they want them. And the only thing that was missing was a goal. Pedro. Young Cal, oh, what a goal. What a stunning goal. Maybe goal of the season could be. And that's not by chance. They would have practised that over, or he would have practised that over and over again. Why is that? Because Ramsdale, you could probably see, he's almost always off his line. They would have prepared for every eventuality. Now, I saw the penalties. The penalties, all of them were almost clean. But the most important thing is they beat Arsenal 5-3 on aggregate. 5-3 on the penalties. Long drawn out game there. And there were some parts in the game where you could see, you know, that they had total control of the game. The second half, when it came out, it's like they went to third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear. And we were having trouble keeping up. Now, Fabio Vera, I spoke about him. What did he speak about? Gabriel Jesus. Were you surprised that he played 45 minutes and then came off? You cannot experiment. Cannot experiment. But then in saying that, then maybe we would have said, oh, why didn't he start if if he brought him in the second half? You go all guns blazing. This game required it because why? Sporting Lisbon showed us what kind of team they are. They're a top-notch team. And even their coach, uh, Amorim, he's highly rated. Highly rated coach. But, yeah, Gabriel Jesus, you know, match-wise, I, I mean, I, I can understand why you would have brought him on or given him some kind of uh, minutes because he's not really match fit. He needs to, get, you know, get up to strength. But was this a game to experiment and give him game time? I don't think so. I don't think so. And what you don't want, is him to incur and receive another injury. And talking about injuries, Tommy Ashu, we have still have to wait and see the extent of his injury. Saliba, I think it's more cautionary, precautionary, because I think he felt a twinge and he wanted to come off. But Tommy Ashu, not, not a first-teamer. Not a first-teamer. You know, so you've gone in there, you haven't gone full strength, you've tried, you, you thought you could get away with it, and then you had to bring in a Martin Odegaard in place of a Fabio Vieira, who was misfiring on all fronts. You know, to do flicks and, and little tricks, that wasn't the time there. Keep it nice and simple. Sorry, guys, I need to, I need to sneeze. Oh, I didn't sneeze. I was going to sneeze, but it didn't, it didn't happen. But, again, sometimes you just have to admit that you were beaten by the better team. And I get the feeling that some of the fan base think, oh, well, it's only Sporting Lisbon. Uh, it's, it's only the Europa League. Only the Europa League. We haven't won any European silverware for 30 years. 30 years. And so 
like I put in our WhatsApp group, Canon 40 WhatsApp group, like winning can be a habit, losing can also be a habit. We're going to Crystal Palace on Sunday. They've just sacked Patrick Vieira. And don't tell me that you're thinking, oh, the easy three points. It won't be easy three points. I will tell you that now. And oh, by the way, I did predict, predict it was going to be a loss for Arsenal. I predicted 2-1 for Sporting Lisbon. Didn't quite work out that way, but they got the job done. What an outfit. I mean, they were just cutting through us like, like a, you know, a knife through butter. Like there was no one there in the midfield. They should have scored a, f a few more goals. I think, um, was it Edwards? He had a couple of chances that he should have put away. <coughs> Excuse me. But commiserations again. And, and I thought that Mikel Arteta would have learned his lesson from... You remember when we played against the other time in Villarreal? You played a force nine in the second leg. He still has not learned his lesson. Do not try to cut corners. If you're telling me you you know you you you're encouraging your players to go out and win, then show it by your selection. Always pick your strongest ele ele um, eleven. Election eleven. But he didn't do that, did he? He didn't do that, and they paid for it. No, Jorginho was left high and dry, man. I mean, he lost control of the World Cup times, and actually, I know it was bucketing down with rain yesterday, but. The players have got to be used by now to play at the Emirates. That's your home stadium. Come rain, snow or thunder, you know how the pitch plays. And I saw so many players, you know, miscontrolling the ball, giving possession away to, to the Sporting Lisbon uh, uh, players. It, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not surprised. I'm absolutely not surprised because, like I said, I did predict it was going to be a 2-1 win for Sporting Lisbon. And they deserved it. They deserved it. I, if, you, if you ask me, can I choose uh, uh, a, man, a man of the match, in inverted commas, I would probably have to say, Rob. I thought Rob Holden had a really good game. The amount of blocks that he made. So many blocks. And he should have played in the first leg. Not uh, Jacob Givor. Rob Holden should have played there. But it's now done. It's dusted. It's over. We go on. We go now to the Premier League. And this is only a good result if we win the Premier League. And our boy, we're going to have a wake-up call. We're going to have a wake-up call on Sunday. They've just lost Patrick Vieira, Crystal Palace. We're going to receive a wake-up call like nobody's business. I mean, I, my money's already on Man City to win the Premier League. I don't believe Arsenal will win, will win the Premier League. And off, off the back of losing against uh, Sporting Lisbon, it's going to be tough to, to get yourselves ready for to go again in the Premier League. I've got nothing much more to say than that, apart from, you know, I, I could name more players. Inchenko didn't have the best of games. <coughs> we spoke about Fabio Vieira, who lasted for a long time, the first second half, before he got subbed off. And then the club captain came on, Martin Odegaard. Martin Odegaard should have started. He should have started. And poor old Martinelli. The, I, want, I don't want to say use the word villain. Are we going to vilify him because he missed that penalty? Uh, I, I hope not. I hope not. But just sometimes you get you have to put your hand up and say, we were beaten by the better team. And we were beaten by the better team. Absolutely. So that's my post-game reaction. And I've got not, not much more to say than that. I just, yeah, it's just some things just weren't right. Again, when I saw Gabriel Jesus, I thought, this is not the game to play Gabriel Jesus. Maybe for motivation, possibly. But beyond that, no, that backfired. And then we got the two injuries. Again, we have to wait and see the extent of a, a, a Takiero Tomiyasu, Saliba. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, he's going to be okay. <coughs> Players that who, who didn't really turn up, uh, Georgina, Fabio Vieira. Then Saka came on, I'm thinking, okay, well, he didn't start. Um, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. But how do you view the Europa League? Do you really want to go out and win it, or do you not? 
anyhow 15 minutes and counting i just i didn't even prepare <laughs> anything at all for 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 this post game actually i was going to do last night but i thought no i, I you know i can't my poor old wife was sleeping whilst i was actually here watching the game and i thought no nah, no nah, i want to cut off i was going to do a post game reaction last night but it was just too late no fully well, i had to wake up early for work oh the things we have to do the things we have to do anyhow um that that is it um i think i need to go into let's have a look the uh our twitter feed and jonathan hi jonathan 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 my friend yeah uh, I, I don't know if you're watching jonathan maybe, maybe or maybe you're not you're, you're watching but he has retweeted that we are live and ola thank you also for retweeting uh that we are live and una as well maybe your husband retweeted that we are live and mark brewer also retweeted that we are live thank you mark thank you for that so there was no comments uh or tweets uh thus far uh let's have a look here okay right uh, what am i doing here what am i doing i, I you know what I, I had so many things i wanted to say you know usually i prepare my notes on the computer for the things i want to talk about but i didn't prepare anything at all i thought you know just just don't try and rant and i had a little rant there <laughs> a little rant um so i think think what i can do now um because i didn't do a man of the match i thought arsenal not worthy of me even thinking about doing a man of the match uh there and oops and so i think i can go into the live chat go into the live chat and there we go emerson emerson good evening Good afternoon. He says that it was a cat and mouse game. Both teams had chances to win it in 90 minutes or extra time. And everybody has uh, said the starting level was wrong. And from my point of view, it was uh, the right decision. Uh, oh, you mean the right, the, the wrong 11, but the right result? I think that's what you're talking about. Uh, on the injury news, uh, Tommy Ashu was seen on crutches here after the match earlier. Uh, ankle uh, or seam. A uh, saliva could be a dead leg. And Jesus was a precaution uh, of why he came off. <clears throat> oh, correction. Uh, on to the injury news. Tommy Ashu was seen on crutches, either ankle or knee injury. Saliba was either on dead a dead leg or Jesus was taken off as a precaution. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I understand what you're saying. Uh, however, I've got to go back to our manager. You know, you can't, you pay for it. You pay for it unless you go out. You know, it, you, again, it's the fine lines. The fine lines. You know, you need to prepare for every eventuality. But limit that by, I mean, look how we are in the Premier League. How are we in the Premier League? We are top of the Premier League because we almost always play our strongest eleven. So why can't you do that in the Europa League? Limit or reduce the, the risk of going out, being knocked out by playing your 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 strongest eleven, or barring injuries. Again, depending on how you view the Europa League, got to go back and blame. Uh, I can use that word blame, but it's down to Mikel Arteta how you prepare your players and try and cover all the eventualities. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. Right. Um. Oops, uh, sorry, just need to put this back up. Okay, there we go. Okay, so um, I believe that we are going to call uh, this one, call it quits, man, call it quits. It just did not happen for us yet again. We have to learn the lesson. And how do we learn the lesson? By making errors. You know, misjudgments. But how long can this go on for? And there is a distinct possibility. I repeat, there is a distinct possibility that we'll end the season not winning anything. FA Cup, yeah. League Cup, any kind of cup we are out of. Out. Premier League, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Uh, anyhow, uh, yeah, I've got a phone call here coming from, from the wife. Uh, 
I'm going to end this one, but I'm going to say thank you to each and every one of you who who saw me. Only only a couple of you. I tried I tried not to rant if that makes any sense, but hey, it is what it is. We got onwards and upwards. We played Crystal Palace on Sunday, who've just sat one of our own, Patrick Vieira. Patrick Vieira has been sacked, but don't get it twisted. Don't think there goes an opportunity for us. That's how we got into this mess in the first place because we thought it's only supporting Lisbon. We'll overcome them. We'll beat them. You know, they they had two of their players, you know, from the first leg, you know, suspended. And I said, the moment you think like that, we have lost. We have, we have lost. And what happened? We lost. I think there's been one more uh, from. Uh, oops. Uh, oh, what's happened? Uh, 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 only other social media channel uh, pundit uh, said uh, that what you said uh, uh, said earlier. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, uh, under twenty ones are lost today. Oh my goodness, not a good day for the Arsenal, is it? Not a good day. We've got to be very very careful that we don't take our our feet oops, our feet off the pedal, and we did that. We did that. So Arteta did that. Can't blame the players. I mean, of course, they had opportunities. You know, we had opportunities. The most important thing is they progress and we don't. Anyhow, anyhow. All right, uh, that um, is it. Uh, I'm out of here. Listen, try and enjoy the remnants of your weekend. We're back in action on, on Sunday. Who knows? I might do something on Sunday, Sunday during the day. Uh, I won't be doing the, the big, uh, big Sunday, uh, the big Sunday show with Paul. Um, I'll leave that for him, and uh, he's got his uh, his merry men or merry women on uh, the panel for for that segment there. Um, anyhow, uh, that is it. So we got almost an upwards another season where we we um, we're out of the Europa League. This <laughs> has been Canon for the channel for Arsenal fans or over this world.